G'day, this is Captain Uberman. This is a Spaz-12 shotgun. This weapon is part of the combined arms weapon pack in Fallout 4. Has custom sounds, custom animations, whether you use this thing in semi-auto form or pump action form, and a whole lot of customization options with it as well. It's a very high quality weapon. Good textures, good models, good everything. And if you are wondering what Spaz means, it was originally special purpose automatic shotgun, but then they changed it to sporting purpose automatic shotgun, which I guess is a way to sell it on the civilian market. It worked. It's a very iconic weapon. This thing has appeared in many video games and many movies. Even derivatives of this thing have appeared in video games as a shotgun in Killzone 1, 2, and 3 called like an LS-13 shotgun. It's basically a Spaz-12 but a little bit thicker. So that was really cool and fun to use back in the day. But I miss Killzone. We'll play it one more time one day. Anyways, so we'll get into the customization with this because uh, there's a lot of things to go through. And for the receivers, you've got the sort of standard things, but sort of renamed. So this one is your light rate receiver, reinforced parts is your heavy frame receiver. Got improved mechanism, which is basically your tuned receiver. Which is going to make it a little bit more better damage, or I guess a hardened receiver, I suppose. Factory condition requires gun nut rank 3, but you restore it to its factory condition, so you get more range and accuracy. An improved chamber is actually kind of good for a shotgun, because it will increase your range, which normally is not that great on a shotgun, so one of my shotguns I will definitely um, and chuck an improved chamber on, but the best and most highest damaging thing will be high grade parts, and that gives us 155 range in comparison to the 191, so it's a big difference, but funnily enough, this thing requires heavy gunner, which um, it uses riflemen to use, so, you know, you got to be a little bit uh, specced out in high level, or I guess versatility built so you can actually make this thing work for you. That's kind of interesting. Right now we've got the 19 inch or 78 factory one. We can extend that out to 21.5 inch, 24 inch if we want to make it even longer and increase our range even further. You can also have a short um, 18 inch which will reduce your range significantly but it'll be less heavy if you've got this thing in survival and can't spare the carry weight then maybe you could get away with that you can also have a high capacity 8 inch one which uses shorter shotgun shells we'll get a lot of capacity but it'll be compact we're gonna make this thing 24 inch because it's awesome like that and uh, that range and accuracy will help me greatly right now we've got a folded stock you can fold it around so it looks like that but that's not aesthetic you can have it completely removed if you want, and you can have a lightweight stock and a fixed stock as well. So obviously that's going to be better for your recoil control, and this one slightly better for your carry weight. We've got the iron sights on right now. If we chuck on a reflex sight when the stock's folded up, yeah, we're not seeing through that very well. So uh, we'll just leave this one with the iron sights. There's a bunch of sights as well, including ones that are uh, made in Russia and some American sites as well, and NATO-based ones. And if you chuck a scope on here, it's going to clip through, and it's going to be a mess, so don't do that. Right now, I've got a factory muzzle. We can give this one a short choke, or a muzzle break to increase our recoil control, or a full choke, which will increase our range and reduce our spread by a heap. A combat suppressor and a salvo suppressor and a covert suppressor. The salvo the suppressor actually increases your range because, obviously, the barrel and everything and I guess it would reduce the spread as well and it actually says that right there that's actually really cool I'm kind of tempted but not this time we'll chuck a full choke on this and that gives us 275 range that's massive for a shotgun that's heaps good we might be able to ding headshots from like almost 10 meters away that's good as right now we've got the double o buckshot here which is 12 pellets generally with shotguns the less pellets are better because the base damage that you are seeing here is going to be divided within each of these pallets. Now, what that means is if you're on very hard difficulty, you've got that damage reduction to deal with before you even get to and damage resistance. So sometimes shotguns tend to be a little bit on the weak side in this. So be sure to look out for ones with less um, pallets. This one has more pallets, which is going to make it significantly weaker. You can have flechette, which will help you pierce through arm, which is kind of useful for a shotgun. Again, because you'll be ignoring a little bit of armor as you're going through making the individual pallets do a little bit more damage but that will give you a small damage penalty just so it's not the go-to thing you can get and get triple o buckshot which has larger pallets but slightly less damage overall than the double o you can have 
basically a two-shot version here, which will increase your accuracy, but only fire two balls. Makeshift shells will have terrible accuracy, but will increase your damage significantly. Rubber bullet is less lethal. Now, going over the pump action versus semi-auto, generally you'll see these things used in a pump action fashion when the pressure of the rounds isn't high enough to actually cycle the thing. So something with a rubber bullet you'll probably want to use as a pump action, at least in real life. This is probably just a something that is a customization option with this thing. So all of the non-lethal stuff that isn't fired at a billion miles an hour will be used with pump action. And then you can actually use a little lever to select whether you want that in real life. I think that's probably it right there. So the more you know, right? You can have heavy slug rounds, which is like a big bullet instead of a, a shell casing with like a million pellets in it, or 12 at least. And you can have sabered ones, which will be slightly better um, accurate, but um, a little bit less damaging. The uranium coated is funny because it'll help you cut through armor and also deal some radiation damage as well. Potentially useful against human combatants. Glass shatter shot is pretty nasty. It shatters a block of glass, causing massive bleeding and damage at the cost of your range and conscience. I want to test that, but I don't want to step outside and test it on one of the angels vibing out there, so maybe we'll use that on a different one. Dragon's Breath is fun because it gives you an Angie type or a damage type that isn't resistant. Nothing is resistant to that by vanilla game standard, so that's pretty fun. 8.5mm Magnum gives you a lot of uh, damage and a lot of range and accuracy. That's tend to be... That's tend to be the one that I go for. It'll still remain in a shotgun form, but we get a lot more range and accuracy out of it. 12 gauge frags are fun. It's not one um, slug that's explosive. It's just like explosive shotguns in the game. And it says, deals massive damage, but the explosives are just as likely to kill you. Not me. I'm a professional. And you can have like 50 cal bullet slugs, which doesn't require idiot savant, at least that I can see here. But that's funny. And it, its little thing is... Some may call putting a 50 cal bullet in a shotgun shell madness, but no one can argue when they've been reduced to red pace. There's lots of humorous stuff that I, you can find in mods. Just little easter eggs here and there. It's good fun, but we're going to leave this with the 8.5mm magnum here. And you can go chuck a sticker on. I'm going to scroll through these ones. I don't know what scum of the earth means, but that ain't me, so that's pretty good. Damage modifiers are active. You can craft these things at a chemistry workbench with these things either here or removed, so if you want to offset the half damage penalty by very hard difficulty, you can chuck that on plus 100%. You won't have to worry about that. And you can chuck something on the bottom of that small rail here, and a bipod on a shotgun. You can do that. Let's not do that. Let's chuck a laser side on. We'll increase our hip fire accuracy. Probably doesn't. Just helps with accuracy. And we've got a reticule style that doesn't apply to us, but if we're using a reflex sight, we can go and check. Uh, we can change what the reticule and the reflex sight looks like or scope. And right now it's pump action. We're going to increase the fire rate at the cost of a little bit of accuracy with the semi automatic version there, because those rounds are powerful enough to cycle it. And a legendary effect is there if you need it. We ain't going to need it. Don't worry about it. Um, so I'm going to create a couple more of these and we'll start shooting stuff. On the chemistry workbench, you'll find a lot of combined arm stuff here, including ammo conversions, just in case you want to convert any of their standard issue ammo from ammos that you have in the game already, which I think is a cool thing. You can also craft the ammo for free if you want, ammo crafting with materials, weapon crafting, and weapon crafting for free with the damage modifiers, and you can tell which one that I crafted with that. Righto, so here we are outside of the Immersive Gunners Plaza going to be taking on this place today with many, many shotguns because I basically went through and grabbed anything that I have found that's cool. This is the one that I made with the Magnum rounds on the workbench. There's the bashing animation there, sprinting animation. Fairly standard, a quick look at this thing in third person. Nice, very nice, great looking shotgun, love it, good stuff. And just to give you an idea of which ones I crafted, this one here is uranium coated rounds. This one's got the sniper version of the slugs, so it's got a scope and a suppressor. This one's got the glass rounds, which are going to cause bleeding damage, close range with that. Um, this one is dragon's breath, fire rounds. This one's 12 gauge frags. And number seven is 50 cal sniper. 
I'll quickly cycle through them now. That's the uranium rounds for armor penetration. This is one of the sniper slugs. If you aim down sights with this thing in third person, don't get a zoom in. But in first person, it's a decent zoom in. Number four now, this is the glass. This one is obviously going to be a very compact version. Want to be nice and close because the spread on this thing is quite large. It's got the um, full choke on it, so that'll increase our range a little bit as we're going through here. This one has Dragon's Breath. No suppressor here, but a full choke to help us with the spread over range. And this one, 12 gauge frags with a salvo suppressor because it reminds me of the pump action shotgun in the early days of Fallout 76 where explosive rounds would basically multiply the weapon's damage over by as many pellets as it shot. And then we've got the 50 cal sniper version, which if I fire this thing, boop, camera's up here now. I'm going to try to take a shot and there's the bullet counter reload system. So we fire this thing a few times and knock our camera to a stargazing thing. Fire two, reload two, and so on and so forth. And I guess we'll get started now. We'll take a deep breath, send a mass, and got him. Don't know how much damage we did. That was a miss. Nope, not that time. Okay, I think we're kind of pushing it using the 50 kills with this thing. Yeah, that, that ain't working at all. Let's go over to Sniper Slugs. Yes, this will work better. There we go. 700 from back there. It's not terrible. It really isn't terrible. And this bipod giving us supreme accuracy. You can't mount bipods on anything, but we can pretend that we're mounting it on this van here. That's pretty cool, I guess. Okay, they're aggroed to something. I think the mantises have shown up. Where are they? Can I see them? Or are they shooting at me? They're throwing... Something? Yes, it's a mantis. Well, you go die now. Messing up my sneak criticals, will ya? Okay, I think we're on now. So, we'll take this from the top. We'll start off with the uh, 8.5 magnum shells. Excuse me? You're getting the VATS treatment after that. That's an ASV. I used that. It's covered in rust. Well, that didn't take long to degrade, did it? Well, that was weird. Anyways. So... With this thing being in semi-auto form, and I'm not going to take on that many gunners. I'm not that mad. Ask Carla to do that, not Lily. Well, you'll notice that per pallet we're doing next to nothing. And granted, the spread on this thing is helping us out quite a lot. It's not that strong. But that was just a training run, you understand. That didn't really happen. That was just the dream Lily had before coming out here. There we go. So it's like a thousand or so damage. And I'm going to pick off a few here just with a little bit of... There's just a bit of Vats cheese just to even the odds a little bit. That's not a slug. That's a 308 round looking thing. Nice. Notice how that gunner don't just dived into the other one. Okay, that's enough cheesing for now, right? So let's forget about the 8.5 Magnum. We'll switch right over to the uh, the rounds, which have depleted uranium in them. And these mantis, mantits, they're going down. You hear me, little bastard? Causing my sneak criticals to... Okay, we're struggling against the giant albino mantits. They're pretty gnarly, these guys. Look out, they'll get ya. Well, that's okay, I guess. Um, usually it starts raining by now, and uh, funnily enough, the British character doesn't bring the rain. Usually it's raining over there all the time, as so I, I hear. So this one faring a little bit better, um, but it looks like with all of the pallets and the damage reduction from this difficulty, it's struggling a little bit. I generally have a very hard time having good fun with shotguns when it comes to using these things, but we can get by with this thing. This seems to be doing pretty well, but let's switch over. Glass rounds. Unsuppressed now. Am I getting any... I think I am getting that. And yes, reload, reload. I cancelled the reload because I went into that. You can see their health... Slowly depleting. That's enough shooting at you. And you know what? These gunners have annoyed me by killing me, but not killing me once. So, you know, it's personal. I won't... I don't care about the ethical reasoning of why to use... See, now you're giving me lip. You've got an MG... No, that's a Spaz-12. Never mind. Well, it's a Spaz-12 fight. Q Jewel of the Fates. Never mind, it's over. I shot her. 
quite a lot. There we go. So, potentially for a weapon that has multiple pallets, I mean, it's not like a tertiary legendary effect, so it won't work like that, but the more pallets that it has, the more bleeding damage it will do. Anyways, feel the power of Dragon's Breath. Well, that was strong. Ah, getting somewhere now, aren't we? Really? I... Are we sure about this? I'll be 100% certain that this is how this is supposed to work. Hey! Bam, right through a wall there. Well, we'll keep going. Now we're pissed off now. We're using Dragon's Breath all matters of... Why is it doing so much? I haven't gone like Terminator mode, never miss IG-88, have I? Well, obviously in slow motion it's going to be easy to get targets, but we've actually killed enough gunners to start regenerating. So Dragon's Breath is a hoot and a half. What do you know? It's not firing through walls though. I guess that's good. <laughs> Anyways, enter 12 gauge frags. This should be fun, right? I can't believe how powerful... I can't believe how powerful Dragon's Breath was. That really turned the tide of the whole battle. But this... This is uh, expected. I expected 12 gauge frags to be gnarly. But... Man, the power difference between these couple of rounds has been staggering. And I I dare say that since Dragon's Breath doesn't really have the chance to kill you at all, that's probably the shell to use, and you can just whack it on, provided you've got the perks to do it. We don't even care about the ethical thing. See, if I'm being shot by World War II era German machine guns, I don't care about the amount of pain I'm causing these chumps, I'll tell you that much. All right, got to use this again, and all right, we've got a slow time here, and let's see if we can get this done. Yes, that worked. 50 cal to the torso. There we go. That one's a headshot. I don't know why we weren't hitting the other bloke before. There's a bit of spread going on, maybe, but appears to be hit scan, and uh, well, see that tracer? Really? That's awesome. Okay, let's keep using this thing in vats because we get to see this awesome ass tracer. Is that like a repurposed gauss rifle without the blue tint? I reckon it is. That's awesome. And it was almost as awesome as leveling up there. Alright, now we don't have anything to worry about. So, um, potentially sneak attack suppressed dragon's breath round. That might be like the way to run this thing in terms of maximum power and should probably change to something else. Sweet. So just to give you an idea of the power difference. So, four shots or whatever into that work, and bam, Dragon's Breath comes out, dead in one, dead in one. And now it starts raining as the fight's over, that's okay, we've got brilliant lighting and scenery and everything beforehand. No idea why that's so strong, but yep, Dragon's Breath, use that, and with that, let's move on. Alright, so, I went and watched like a... FPS Russia video from 15 years ago. He was using Dragon's Breath on a mannequin, and I'm not convinced we're using the same round there. That was something else. And, uh, you know what? Let's use this guy's face for some criticals, shall we? At least one, right? One? Nope, not quite. Nope, we got it. Thanks, Grim Reaper Sprint. Much appreciated. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna snipe at Swan and miss that first shot with the second shot. May as well reload now. He's not the most perceptive super mutant behemoth out there, but we'll keep on backing off. We'll try to get these headshots in as he's coming in, and uh, we'll see how we go. Once he gets mutated, I'm going to do a full VATS run using the 50 cal rounds, which should be okay. And this thing, it's holding its own at range here, and I think we're ready for a full VATS run here. We shouldn't get that many shots, but we are. We'll go for one critical, just one for... 4,000 damage, not bad, not bad. Keep the shots coming in. Are we... I think we're... Well, there's a sniper knockdown. Okay, it is possible, but... Maybe not possible on the, uh... The, the scopes that aren't, uh... 3D, or rather, the see-through scopes. It's not very practical for me to do that. Let's switch over to... The, uh, 12 gauge frags, and... This random deer showed up. Now, ideally, I'd like this guy to throw boulders at me 
and we'll try to outpath them and uh, see what we can do with that. Although, um, now that I know you can utilize the um, that six time scope as a sniper, um, getting the bird shot, which has like a, I don't know how many pallets it's got, but I, I imagine a lot, using that instead Wow, okay, we smashed through those rounds pretty quickly. Using that with a scope would just be like constant knockdowns, which is great. I feel like I'm doing less damage with those subsequent shots. Is there like a reverse range going on here? Do the explosives need time to arm themselves? And you're going to fall down. No, you fell the wrong way. Instead of a big dramatic fall over these things, and we're right back over near Gunners Plaza. But don't worry, they've all been dealt with. And with that regeneration... That's the power of piezonucleic energy shields, everyone. It was a dark and foggy night, but I have no fear because I have the most cooked shotgun I can create. So this has got a suppressor, dragon's breath, and a scope on it, which according to my calculations, should be able to kick this Wendigo's ass. So we'll open up with a critical, and then we'll just, uh, I don't know, do something else, because that thing is dead. Oh, he's knocked down. Yep. <laughs> this is without a doubt the most cooked shotgun I have ever used in Fallout 4. Am I hitting those things? Who cares? They're dead. Ooh, interruptible reloads. Oh, that's cool. Didn't know that. Well, now you know that too. And I think with that, we get a blazing sledgehammer. Oh, you can kill yourself with it. Don't worry, that didn't happen. She's just... She just fell asleep. And with that, I will think I'll call it a video there. The attachment section went on for a little bit longer than I thought. But that's okay, because I think we gave this thing a decent run out for what it is. So that there was a Spaz-12 combat shotgun. And it does sort of work with classic holstered weapons. But you'll find that it's a little bit lower than usual. Which can sometimes lead to clipping if you've got the longest barrel and you walk around something that'll happen but that's okay it's not not the worst defender i've seen but if they were to move it up a little bit i think the weapon would do pretty good out of that so yeah i highly recommend this mod it's good fun and uh well you get a whole lot of weapons for it and this is just one of them and they're all very high quality you can have a lot of good fun with this and they're all added to the level list so enemies have them just like adding extra guns into the game when is that ever a bad thing seriously when is that and with that thank you very much for watching guys i'll see you later